Welcome, everyone. It's so good to be with you uh, this Sunday morning. I'm joined by Pastor Elizabeth Maskell, who will be sharing in the message with me. Pastor Mac Patrick is behind the camera, uh, making the magic happen that this might come to you. Uh, we're also blessed today with the musical gifts of John Fakin, Sarah Ann Fakin, and Judy Newman, who will be offering some music. Uh, Carter Guyman is going to be reading the lesson, and the Lang family uh, is offering the prayers. Again, welcome. Today's theme is this, God's word is like the rain that waters the earth and brings forth vegetation. It is also like the sower who scatters seed indiscriminately. Our lives are like seed sown in the earth. Even from what appears to be little, dormant, or dead, God promises a harvest. And today, at the Lord's table, we will be fed with the bread of life that we may bear fruit in the world. We join together in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, for whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. sower. Jesus sat in a boat when he told some people on the shore a story about a sower who planted seeds on the ground. Some seeds landed on a path. Birds came along and ate the seeds, so the plants didn't grow. Some seeds landed in dirt with lots of rocks. 
The sun was too hot and burned those seeds, so the plants didn't grow. Some seeds landed in dirt with too many weeds. The weeds choked the seeds, so the plants didn't grow. Some seeds landed in good soil, and the plants grew and grew. Jesus wants us to share God's word, like the sower who scattered the seeds. Just like some of the seeds that didn't grow, some people will not listen to God's word, but many people will listen, and God's word will grow in them. Grace, mercy, and peace to you, beloved ones, from God who uh, created, God who scatters seed, God who makes growth happen, and God who uh, nurtures and loves and uh, encourages and holds us all. It's good to be with you today. I'm going to offer in just a moment here a photograph that I, I took last September. Uh, it was a, a blessed surprise one day when I stepped outside my house uh, into the driveway to go to my car, probably to come to church, and I saw this petunia growing up out of the crack in the driveway. Apparently, uh, apparently the summer before I had planted uh, purple petunias, and those seeds had found their way into these minuscule, well, not so minuscule, these small cracks in the driveway and were blooming all over the driveway. Even when I saw it then, I thought of today's uh, gospel reading, which has, uh, has the sower in it, uh, uh, farming, if you will, in a way that's uh, pretty unorthodox in terms of how we understand it with our careful planting of things in rows. We have here uh, the sower just tossing those seeds uh, into, the, into the air and they would land where they would and some would take root and, and some would not and some would blow away. But in and through it all, what I always hear in that is God making growth happen in these marvelous and unexpected places as I witnessed last summer. So I think of that story, that, that marvel Im marvelous image of God just scattering seeds, and there are two things I hear through it. One is that is, of course, an image of who God is, but it's also, it's also an invitation to who you and I are called to be with the, with the seeds, with the gifts that God has given us, to simply, simply scatter them into the world and to trust that, that God, God will bring growth in and through them. I think of ways in which we've done that in this congregation. I, I'm sitting here with Mac behind the camera here. I think about the folks that over these last few years have gone out and handed out lunches over at uh, Grace Place Campus Ministry, not knowing to whom those lunches would go, but uh, taking those gifts of God and simply sharing them, trusting that God would make marvelous things come from them. I think of last year when uh, I had the opportunity to send uh, to buy Bibles to women in prison, and the requests would come again and again with these names and, and who would want one, and some of these women... I was told I had never owned hardly anything of their own before, certainly not a Bible. This was the first one they would have, and you just kept sending them because of your, your generous gifts. Think of those who do quilting in this place and, and how uh, they put those, those precious things together, and they're just given away across town or around the world, and who knows what God does with those seeds as they go. Think of you folks that are out there making masks and have a phone call. I, I made a six weeks ago or so to one of you and, and said, you know, they need masks at the county jail for those who are, who are inmates there. And without hesitation, this person said, I'll have 50 of them to the church by noon. We don't know where they go. I suppose there we have some idea of where they go, but we don't have any idea of what good they'll do or, or how they will be received. But we trust that God keeps using those gifts, those seeds that God's given us as we scatter them, really to change the world. Uh, to bring beauty to it, as that flower in my driveway did, but also to feed the world in all the ways that matter. And I, I think today uh, of kind of the wonder of this uh, parable that Jesus tells and the unexpected places where growth can happen and what a strange time you and I are living in. And, and the questions I'm wondering about now is, is what seeds is God, are God planting now in you? Or in me, or in all of us together, and and what kind of uh, what kind of growth might that bring? Certainly for us as individuals, but also for us as congregation or congregations. I, th I think about uh, the fact that uh, for the last several months we have been offering uh, the gifts of God in this different way, different than we've ever done it before, and how many times over this time I've heard from people who maybe haven't been in worship for a while, maybe because of a health issue or, or a timing issue or something else, but who are, who are joining all of you on Sunday morning to hear God's word. And I'm thinking about how when we put this out every Sunday, 
that we don't know where it goes. And so we get to stand and watch and wait and wonder and rejoice in the promise that God will make it land somewhere where it will take root and the world won't be the same again. I'd invite you, as you consider this uh, parable of the sower today, uh, to remember that image of God scattering seeds. And within that image, that invitation to you and me to do the same. And to think about where you're already doing it. And to ask God then, where you or you and I or all of us together might be called to do it next. I think that's what we're called to wonder about today. May God bless you as you, uh, as you listen for God's voice and God's promise within that. Amen. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's good to have you here with us today as we uh, begin going through Matthew's Gospel um, with his many, many parables. This one, the parable of the seeds being scattered and things growing or not growing. But for me, what I wanted to look at in this particular reading for this week is what was left out. You know, they teach us to do that, to look at what is in the reading, but then also to see what was left out of the reading. So in between the two halves where Jesus tells the parable, and then explains the parable. He, the disciples come and say to him, why do you speak in parables? And Jesus says to them, to you, it's been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, it has not been given. They don't really get that either. And I don't get a lot of what Jesus says next, but he says, the reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing, they do not perceive. And hearing, they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them, indeed, is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, you will indeed listen, but never understand. You will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Healing is always what Jesus is going for. Now, what made me want to look at this today was a couple of things that have been going on these last few weeks. Um, we have a morning book study group that uh, this morning, um, in reading Making Sense of the Bible by Adam Hamilton, uh, we were looking at suffering, divine providence, who's in charge, why do bad things happen to good people? What are, what are the answers to those things? And of course, the answers are, there are consequences to our actions. There are illnesses for which there are no, no cures. And we all die. God doesn't cause them. And the thing is, none of them will ultimately have the final word, for God will always bring good from evil. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Even a petunia will grow in concrete. The other thing we've been studying, a larger group, there's, I don't know, maybe 14 or 15 of us, is a book called The Cross and the Lynching Tree by James Cone. He's a black theologian. Uh, and there's a lot of theology in this book. But there's also a lot of history. And what strikes me most about this history and what, what we find ourselves discussing is how much we didn't know 
how much we didn't know about the history of um, Black America and what people have gone through and how they've gone through it and laws that didn't get passed, laws that did get passed. It's caused a lot of pain. And yet, there's always hope behind that pain. This is what uh, Dr. Cohen is teaching us, that it's always the hope of what will come after that we hold on to. God gave this word that Jesus speaks to us today about, to Isaiah. Something in God's people had to die before new life can come, God says, out of this Isaiah text. Something has to die before new things can come. And I'm wondering, in this time of pandemic, in this time of upheaval, in this time of division, what is it that may need to die in us to allow new life to come through? to allow Christ's healing love to be the balm of all of us. I don't have any answers for you today. I don't think I ever will have any answers. But one thing I'm hoping is that ears will be opened, as will eyes. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him, and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Heal us, Jesus. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by your witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God. 
The mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees, and for lands stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. Reigning God, we pray for your nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Guide our leaders and all of us as we discern how best and when to resume everyday activities in the midst of this pandemic. Hear us, O God. Your mercy Mercy is is great. great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need those suffering from COVID-19, their caregivers, and their health care providers. Protect frontline workers everywhere. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds that you have planted, that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is is great. great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for being with us this day to worship. Uh, At 11 o'clock, please join us again on Facebook Live, um, and we will be uh, offering the words of institution and then um, the gifts of wine and bread to the people. So join us for that. You'll get more instructions um, as time goes on. But at this point, receive the benediction. Neither life nor death nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.